What is up rockers, I'm Shinchi42, today we're going to talk about ways to help in KVK as free to play or low spender. If you like contents about Rise of Kingdoms guides to help you to be successful or your alliance, subscribe to this channel now and turn that notification on. And if you are enjoying the content that we are making, make sure hit that thumbs up, one view, one thumbs up. Deal? <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is resources. How can a free-to-play player help in Kingdom versus Kingdom via resources? First of all, what you really need to do, and this is very simple, you need to start to support your whales. Your whales don't have unlimited funds. Not everyone will have unlimited funds. What you need as a free-to-play player, you need to be farming early before KVK starts. So after a Kingdom vs. Kingdom is over, there is a lag time or duration where you're not in the Lost Kingdom. Now during this time, what you should be paying attention is... Now during this time, what you need to be doing is farming, farming, and farming. Farm wood, farm food, stone, and gold. One of the most important here is farming gold. So if you are a free-to-play player, make sure you have a good amount of gold reserves because your whales will be asking for assistance during KVK because they will run out of gold. No matter how much they spend, they will run out of gold unless they are gemming the heal. They will need gold. So make sure you work on farming gold and have a good reserves. Also, a great tip here is do not use your resource tokens when you are not in Kingdom versus Kingdom. So as a free-to-play player, as a moderate spender, you should be farming everything during this lag time. Don't use your tokens because you will need these during Kingdom versus Kingdom because you're not going to be actively farming when you are in a war. So you will be relying on the items that you have collected throughout the season that you are playing Price of Kingdoms. Number two, be active. Defeat barbarians for kingdom honors and alliance points. And not just that, it's also going to help you with your individual points, right? Because in kingdom versus kingdom, when you are participating, defeating barbarians, you will gain those honor points. And in terms, you will be rewarded at the end of the season with speed ups, legendary commander sculpture. And if you actually topped up in that event, you can also get a city theme like what I have currently. Now, what you need to do is really bank, bank those action points. During downtime of Kingdom versus Kingdom, what you need to be doing is doing a lot of barbarian fort rallies. As you can see here, there is a lot of level 5 fort trophy or level 4 trophy as well. Claim all. As you can see, we're getting emergency action point recovery. You need to start banking those. You need to convert your action point here into reserves. Once you have successfully done that, you're tremendously going to be a big asset in your kingdom during kingdom versus kingdom because you can provide alliance points you can provide kingdom points and you can provide yourself individual points as well and not just that by defeating barbarians in kingdom versus kingdom you will be getting a great amount of rewards due to the amount of potential rewards that you get in the lost kingdom they're giving out plenty of rewards higher gems higher rewards of speed ups and better resources loots from the barbarians number three make sure you are joining rallies and are maximizing every single points when somebody is casting a rally so in kingdom versus kingdom there will be barbarian forts especially on the level 10s you need to really join the rally because every person that joins the rally will be gaining points for your alliance points, kingdom points, and also, of course, your individual points. You need to do this because if you don't, you're losing a lot of points. Now, that's pretty simple, so we'll keep moving on. Number four, this is something that is very difficult that I've noticed with other players. Understanding what type of commanders and knowing what type of units to send and not to send. So. As you can see here, 
Great example. Somebody is casting a rally. You can see it's a Tao Tao and Pelagius. That would be a cavalry commander. As you can see, you can click it and you will see what type of unit it is. You can see another cavalry, Teutonic Knight, Cavalry, Mamluk, and then another cavalry, a knight, a regular one. So what you need to do as a free-to-play, a moderate spender, is whenever somebody casts a rally, let's say you know you're looking at this brand new like this, and then you click. Make sure whoever has that crown, look at their commander. Oh, it's Tao Tao and Pelagius. It's gotta be a cavalry setup. And if you're unsure, go check what other people are sending. If it's a bunch of cavalry, try not to send infantry or archers because you're going to mess up the system that they have. With sending one specific type of unit, you are maximizing the buff. So if you are in the cavalry, you're maximizing this buff from the talent tree. Now, if I was the one rallying and people are paying attention, which the kingdom has been really good at it already, I usually would rally with archers. Typically before, I would rally with YSG and El Cid. And people will send me full archers that's because, like I said, the buff here are archer setup. So make sure you are paying attention. As you can see, this is a great indicator if you're not sure. If there is a Richard, here we go. Richard here, infantry. Now this is going to be the same rules as if you are defending the structures in the flag. Make sure you look at the flag information and you can see as well whoever is inside the flag and what type of units other players are sending. And if you are unsure, like I said, check every single troop units inside or ask your alliance because they will be more than happy to tell you what type of unit to send because you don't want to mess things up for your entire alliance. You don't want to be that person that somebody is going to say, hey, take your troop out and bring the right troops. You don't want to be that person. Number five, this is a great participation task to do. Um, locate barbarian forts to be rallied by the alliance. So, here's something that I love to do is to rally during kingdom versus kingdom, and you know, just even rallying barbarian forts. And sometimes it's very difficult for us to find it. Sometimes it could be very difficult for us to find the higher level barbarians when they first come out, and there will be events, and you will need to complete, you know, defeating certain amount of barbarian forts. Now, it's really helpful when everybody, like free-to-play players, moderate spender, low spender, pay to win, if they contribute into locating these forts and sharing it into the alliance, that is fantastic. Now, with the alliance, if you're an officer, if you're a free-to-play officer, or a moderate spender, low spender, it doesn't matter what type of spender are you. There are many icons or markers now. Make sure you start marking those barbarian forts. And a great way here to also give you a tip here is that you need to rally the lower tiers of Barbarian Force if you want to see the higher tiers. So basically, you need to make room for the new ones to pop out. But like I said, this number five tip, relatively easy. Just share. Participation, right? You can make yourself look good if you are sharing those Barbarian Force. Somebody's going to say, the authors are going to say, huh, this guy is sharing all these information for us. This guy is sharing the location of these barbarian forts and wow i mean i'm gonna start talking to this guy and um, i've done that i've asked for like hey can somebody locate barbarian forts and then there's gonna be one person that will locate every single barbarian forts and that tremendously helped the entire alliance because first like i said in the earlier you're going to get those points alliance points kingdom points and also of course you're going to get maximum rewards as well when you are rallying them right so a simple task like that can go a long way so we've had five tips now. Just to recap on all of this is that for the number one, gold, you might be wondering, why do we need gold? The reason why we need gold to provide with the pay to wins because T5 costs so much. And you have to kind of learn like who to support as well. Some T5 players may not ask for resources. I typically don't do that. There's some days where I'm really, really struggling and I will ask, but Sometimes I don't and I just like, I hope, you know, they kind of understand. It would be really nice if you just randomly support a whale in your alliance. Let's say they are working on archers, like for me. What I really need most is wood and stone and also gold. So those are three things that you can help if you know somebody is working on archers. If somebody is working on infantry, you might want to help them with food, wood, and gold. All right? So it really depends. What you can do is go to your 
um, training camps and you can see what type of resources you are needing to train them and you can kind of figure it out, right? And see, and then send resources to those who are participating a lot in the war. Now, you don't wanna just randomly send your resources to nobody that is a whale, but you have to pay attention as well who are the one actually contributing and support them. And hopefully, maybe they will recognize you or something and give you resources in the future. Another thing is that hopefully your kingdom or your leaders will recognize your effort and reward you with the rewards that they get in the kingdom versus kingdom. And like I said, just grind, be active. Um, we've mentioned about defeating barbarians, rallying barbarian force, make sure you're joining. And um, the best thing here that you really need to learn is that understanding what type of the commanders and what type of units to send because if you can't get that honed down, your alliance will be mad and you're going to be the one or sole reason why your team or your alliance or your kingdom will lose. So make sure you're paying attention, right? And just locate the barbarian force. This will just tremendously help your alliance as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the second half of the tips. And wow, you guys are getting tremendous amount of tips here from me. So number six, join offensive rallies as soon as possible. And if you are far, march your troops closer to join actively marching rally. So what does that mean? Let's say there is a rally right now. I am rallying this flag, right? So what you need to do is that join my rally right away. And once it's marching, as you can see, it's marching. What you need to do is you need to camp here, camp your troops here and allow people that are closer to join that rally first. And then what you need to do is then march your troops into the rally itself and join that way. In that way, you're not delaying. And also when that march is actively attacking, and you're marching for like two, three minutes away, don't do that because you're preventing other players to get into that rally. And what's going to happen, your rally is going to get defeated quickly because you're losing troops in there because you're not maximizing the amount of troops. So make sure if you're a free to play player or even whatever level you are, this applies to everybody. March your troops into the cities that are closer or march it to the, you know, just in the open field and then join once you are closer. So as a free to play player, low spender, what you can really do is that join the rally that the whales set up quickly and make sure you're paying attention on what type of units they need. Number six, keep the structure alive, flag, fortress, pass, and make sure you know how to refresh them to maintain troop counts. What does that mean? So there will be times that you're going to be in a war. Let's say you are defending this flag. What you're doing is that you're going to reinforce this flag, right? And your troops is going to basically decrease as the battles goes on. Now what you need to do is take out that troop. So you have to click back. There's going to be an option here to click back. So let's see. For example, here, we're going to march our troop in here. We're defending this right now, right? So once this troop count goes low, what you can do is click back, send your troop back home, and then send another batch in there to keep that flag alive. That's what you need to do. You need to start refreshing your troops inside. Because if you're not doing that, if you're only sending one dispatch, you're not going to be able to defend that flag completely. So make sure your reinforcement game is on point. So number eight, build flags and pay attention to alliance markers. So there's going to be times where the alliance is going to ask you to build flags slowly. There are times that they're going to ask you to build flags fast. So for the slow flag building, it's going to be mostly for your alliance shop credits, your individual credits, so that you can gain more um, silver coins. Now, if it's going to be a fast one, you need to make sure you put full troops in there to build it fast. So make sure you participate because without the player participation, it's going to be very, very hard to build a flag and it's, and it's going to take a long time. And in Kingdom versus Kingdom, time matters a lot. Number nine, this is a great tip, not just for Kingdom versus Kingdom, but in war in general. Do not go alone. Always stick with your team as you can deal greater damage with your buddies. So remember that because when you are in a war, right, you don't want to be picked off. And when you're honing down into one commander, Everyone is attacking that. You're, you're actually creating more damage. That commander that you're honing on is going to decrease and everything's just going downhill for that person. And you're going to win those battles. So make sure you are with your team. Make sure you pay attention to markers. When the markers say go, you go. When the markers say hold off, you hold off. So 
Just a little bit of a common sense in a battle. Following instructions of your officers are tremendously going to help you. Now, here's another great tip. I think everybody is going to love this tip, especially the leaders and um, you know the officers. Um, as a low spender, free to play, you may not have all the commanders you need in the game, right? You may not have the highest or the strongest commanders and you're probably wondering, oh man, how can I help the Alliance? My commanders are relatively weak. Um, I feel like I'm useless. You know what? I'm just going to sit back and farm and just send resources to, to the team. You know what? Let me tell you this. You can be as valuable as the whale in the battlefield. What you need to do is you need to look into the other commanders that you have. Now, you can play as a support. Take a look at Joan of Arc, a great commander that can provide buff. There's a reason why we have her. And there's a lot of players out there that don't use her in the battlefield. When there is like a big clash or big swarm, when you're having like a big troop marching towards the enemy, send a Joan of Arc, please. Send one or two. Um, well, only one for you. But like, if there's one or two players sending Joan of Arc, that's going to tremendously help the entire alliance to win the battles because it's going to greatly increase buffs in here increase infantry units health 30 percent cavalry defense 30 percent archer attack by 30 percent and also grants additional 50 rage per second right now imagine that this is going to grant nearby friendly forces wow Think of that, guys. If you're sending that, you're really helping your team. And if you want to provide healing, let's say if you have a maxed out Cleopatra level five healing, that's going to be great, right? Healing factor 400, defense factor 15%. Let's say you don't even, just forget about all of this. Just think about the healing factor and defense. You're there to support. You're there not to be the DPS. You're there as a support. Tremendous, tremendous. And also Aetoflit, don't forget about her. Attack defense and health reduction wow if there is a rally that has been going on that is attacking your flag send a bunch of edel fled defense attack and health reduction so something that i do is i would send debuff commanders into a rally when they're attacking barca if, well free to play low spender probably won't have this um, but like i said edel fled will definitely be a great tool for you. So I hope you enjoyed this content. 10 ways to help in KVK as a free to play or a low spender. Let me know if there are other ways as a free to play or a low spender can do. Drop down in the comment section below so we can educate other players whenever they're reading the comments because sometimes we can't capture every information. So if you enjoy this content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and share the video. And um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if it was actually helpful. And I will see you again later, rockers. Bye. Actually, we're not done yet. Check the slides out real quick.